subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Welcome to Junior High School uh, on Joy Learning TV. It is RME time and today we are going to have another interesting RME lesson for JHS2. My name is Rachel Oswampuma and I'll be your facilitator. Our topic is religious personalities. We are looking at religious personalities and our subtopic is religious leaders. Let's look at our lesson objective. By the end of the lesson, the people will be able to explain religious leaders. Religious leaders. And two, know the classification of religious leaders. And three, discuss the life of Abraham. These are our lesson objectives for our lesson today. Our keywords, leaders, classification, patriarchs, significance, covenants, and sacrifice. Let's go through our keywords again. Leaders, classification, patriarchs, significance, covenants, and sacrifice. If you are ready, let's move. And we are beginning with the meaning of religious leader. Who is a religious leader? And a religious leader is the one who is recognized by a religious body as having some qualities or authority within that body lead them and has a significant role in the growth of that religious body. So anyone who has some kind of authority or quality in a particular religion or someone who has done something significant in a certain religion is known as a religious leader. and classification of religious leaders. Remember that in our lesson objective, you are supposed to note the classification of religious leaders. So one, we have patriarchs, we have prophets, three, caliphs, and four, religious leaders. Patriarchs, prophets, caliphs, and religious leaders. So we are going to take one patriarch today and discuss his life from birth till he died. So who are patriarchs or who is a patriarch? They were religious heads or leaders in the Old Testament. Old Testament, then it means that we are referring to the Bible or Christian religion, who were chosen by God for specific purposes. So there were leaders in the Old Testament who were chosen by God for some specific purposes. And we shall discover those purposes as we proceed with our lesson. So individuals in the Bible who were referred to as patriarchs include Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. And they are called patriarchs before because they were leaders of a nation. They, were, they are called patriarchs because they were leaders of nations. So we are going to look at the life of one patriarch today. And there's a picture on your screen. Can you identify this person from the Old Testament? 
Okay, so I'll give you some clues. He had a covenant with God. That is clue number one. He had a covenant with God. I'm giving you the second one. He is called the father of faith. That's my second clue. Are you getting close? Okay. Let me give the third one. I'm sure some people have figured out what answer I want. For those who haven't gotten the answer or the name of this individual on your screens, I'm giving the last clue. God asked him to sacrifice his son. Yes. So we are talking about Abraham, the father of faith. Yes. He was a patriarch. And today we are considering the life around him so Abraham was called by God he was called by God and everything we are going to discuss about Abraham can be seen in Genesis chapter 12 to chapter 25 from the Holy Bible so Altogether, Abraham lived 175 years. So we are going to discuss the life around him. So the call of Abraham. He was born in heir of the Chaldeans. And do you know his father's name? Abraham's father. Yes, his father's name was Terah. Good. So he spent most of his life in the land of Canaan. You know why? He was born in Ur, but he spent most of his life in Canaan. You know why? I'm sure some people know the answer. We will discover that as we go through our lesson. So the picture of Canaan displayed beautifully on your screens. Then Abraham was called by God to leave his country, his kindred, and his father's house to Canaan. So this is the reason why the previous slide says that he lived most of his life in Canaan. Because God commanded him to leave the place of his birth and go to Canaan. So God spoke to him. To leave everything he had behind and go to Canaan. So at age 75, he obeyed God and left. He left together with his, with his wife, Sarah, and his nephew, Lot. He left for Canaan. And they passed through the land to a place called Shechem where the Lord appeared to Abraham and promised to give the land to his descendants. So whilst there, the Lord appeared to him again and promised to give the land to his descendants. And there, Abraham built an altar for the Lord because that was where God made a promise to him. So he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel and pitched his tent there with his family, his wife and his nephew and everything that they had, including their livestock. He pitched their tent there Then Abraham was a covenant name that was given to him by God when he entered into covenants with him. So when Abraham entered into a covenant with God, his name was changed to Abraham. So what was his previous name? Do you remember? We'll find out if you can't. Yes, so we are here. 
So his name was changed from Abram to Abraham. After he had a covenant with God. And Abraham means father of many nations. Father of many nations. So his name was changed from Abram to Abraham. Meaning father of many nations. Then his wife's name was also changed from Sarai. Which means princess or my princess to Sarah. Which means mother of nations. So Abraham's was changed to father of many nations. And Sarah's was changed to mother of nations. Good. Now let's look at the covenant that was made between God and Abraham. So what is a covenant? An agreement between two people or two parties. Which is usually sealed with blood. Yes, any agreement that was made between two people or two parties and sealed with blood in the Old Testament was referred to as a covenant. So when God called Abraham, he made a covenant with him. And remember, it was then that he changed his name. So God promised Abraham many descendants who will become a great nation. And he was promised divine protection and guidance by God. Then five, the land of Canaan will be given to him and his descendants to bless those who bless Abraham and curse those who curse him. So in the covenant, God told Abraham that he will bless those who bless him and curse those who curse him. And then God changed his name to Abraham, which means father of many nations. Then seven, as a sign of the covenant, God asked him to circumcise all male descendants, including slaves or servants, on the eighth day of birth. And what is circumcision? I'm sure you have seen some family members or your younger siblings who got circumcised. And it is a procedure that is done to remove the foreskin of the human penis. Yes, and God asked them to do that circumcision on the eighth day of birth. Anyone who wasn't circumcised during those times was considered as unclean. But because God was in a covenant with Abraham and wanted everyone around him to be clean, God asked him to circumcise all his male descendants, including servants. So that was done on the eighth day of birth. Then eighth, any male who refused to be circumcised has broken the covenant that was made between God and Abraham. Then nine. Abraham was worried for not having his own son. But God promised to give him his biological son, through whom his descendants will be as numerous as the sky or the stars of the sky. So God promised to make the descendants of Abraham as numerous as the stars of the sky. Then ten God directed Abraham to perform an or a sacrifice as a sign that his promise would be fulfilled. Then 11, God said to Abraham in a dream that his seed shall be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and they shall serve them for 400 years, after which they shall have their freedom. So this covenant marked the beginning of a new relationship between God and the house of Israel. Now let's look at the importance of the covenant. 
what importance was derived from the covenant that was had or that Abraham and God had. So one, the covenant became a binding covenant between God and Abraham. So through this, Abraham had both spiritual and physical relationship with God. He could see God physically. And that is because of the covenant that he had with him. Then two, God revealed his divine nature and name to Abraham. And God's name as El Shaddai, which means God Almighty, was revealed to Abraham because of the covenant. And three, God promised to Ishmael, the son that Abraham had with Hagar, his maid servant. So remember that Abraham had a son with Hagar, and Hagar was the maid servant of Sarah. And we shall discover or we shall look at why Hagar was given to Abraham to have a son or a child with him. Then for Abraham in the fulfillment of his part of the covenant, showed great faith and obedience to God. That is why he is called the father of faith, because he had faith in God and obeyed him. Then five, the covenant introduced male circumcision for all male Jews on the eighth day. This was done to keep them clean or pure. And this is an external proof that they were descendants of Abraham. Anyone who was circumcised was a proof that they were descendants of Abraham. Six, the covenant gave the Jewish nation their roots. So Israel or the Israelites traced their roots to Abraham, who was the first patriarch. Now let's look at lessons that can be learned from the covenant that Abraham had with God. And one, we look at faith and trust are necessary for man's interaction with God. You can't have a relationship with God if you don't trust him or if you don't have faith in him. Then two, obedience to God attracts blessings. If you are obedient to God, you attract his blessings. If you follow the commands that are given by God, God releases his blessings upon you, just as he did for Abraham. Then three, the covenant introduced male circumcision on the eighth day. And this was proof that they were descendants of Abraham, as rightly said. Then D, through the covenant, God's name was revealed. And we are talking about El Shaddai, which means God Almighty. Then E, God decides who to call and who to use to achieve his objectives. So if God wants to use you, then he calls you. Then F, God can change a person's life or personality. Then through the covenant, we can see God's assurance of protection and upkeep for his people. Remember that God told Abraham that he would bless those who bless him and curse those who curse him. This was assurance of God's guidance and protection for him. Then God is a covenant keeper. He is ready to fulfill all his promises to mankind and also expects man to fulfill the promises that are made to him and to our fellow men. Now let's look at Abraham in Egypt. 
Abraham went to Egypt from Canaan. He went to Egypt. And this was because there was a famine in the land of Canaan. So there was no rains and because of that they couldn't plant their crops and that brought hunger in the land of Canaan. So they had to move to Egypt. And whilst they came close to Egypt, Abraham told Sarah that when the Egyptians ask who she is to him, Sarah should say that she is a sister. And this Abraham did because he didn't want the Egyptians to kill him and take over his wife. So this was when Abraham was having a discussion with Sarah, telling him to tell the Israelites that, to tell the Egyptians that she was his sister. Now when the Egyptians saw Sarah, they were attracted to her because she was beautiful. And we are told that the prince recommended Sarah to Pharaoh so that Pharaoh could take her as his wife. So this is a picture of when the prince was recommending Sarah to Pharaoh. And remember that Abraham had told Sarah to say that she is his sister. So because Pharaoh wanted to marry Sarah, they were given special treatments in Egypt. So Sarah and Abraham had the services of the servants as and when they needed. They were treated nicely because Pharaoh wanted Sarah for a wife. Now, God was not happy with what Pharaoh did. And so he decided to bring a plague on Egypt for taking another man's wife. Even though Pharaoh didn't know that Sarah was married, he was indirectly committing adultery because Sarah was already married. So God brought the plagues on Egypt. And the first plague was that Nile turned into blood. Can you imagine swimming in a river and suddenly it turns into blood? So God brought all these things as warning to Pharaoh that he was committing adultery. The second plague Frogs came from the river to people's homes. So whilst working, you'll be stepping on frogs. They will enter your bedrooms and be lying comfortably on your beds. The whole country of Egypt was flooded with frogs from the river. The third plague was the invasion of gnats. And they are insects, as rightly seen on your screen. So this is a picture of gnats. They came into Egypt, and they were everywhere. The fourth plague was flies. So there were so many flies all over Egypt. Then the fifth plague was the death of livestock. People's cattle and sheep were dying because of the plague. And sixth, there were boils on people. Boils. And the seventh plague was hail. And hail is pellets of frozen rain. So the rain that was falling was frozen. And eight is the locust infestation. So lots of locusts disturbing people and disturbing and um, destroying crops as well. 
And then the, ni the ninth plague, there was total darkness in the whole of Egypt. And the, third one, the tenth one is the death of Pharaoh's firstborn son. So God brought all these on Pharaoh as punishment for taking someone's wife. Then after being queried for the truth, whilst Pharaoh was experiencing all these things in his town, he knew that there was something wrong. So after a series of consultations, he realized where the problem was coming from. So he called Pharaoh and questioned him. And when he found out the truth, he asked Abraham and his wife Sarah to leave the country of Egypt. So with everything that was given them, Pharaoh gave Abraham lots of property or lots of wealth, including animals, because he wanted Sarah for a wife, including maid servants. Hagar was part of the maid servants that was given by Pharaoh to Abraham. So they left the town of Egypt or the country of Egypt because Pharaoh found out about the truth. Now let's look at the strife between the headsmen of Abraham and Lot. So when they returned to Canaan from Egypt, there was a misunderstanding between the headsmen of Abraham and that of Lot, his nephew, over where their cattle or their livestock should graze. And Abraham explained to Lot that they were a family, so there was no need having misunderstandings over where the animals should graze. So Abraham decided that for all the problems to be solved, Lot should go a separate way from him. And he asked Lot to choose which part of the land he wanted. So Lot chose the fertile land of Jordan towards Sodom and Gomorrah. And then he left. He bid farewell to his uncle and left with everything that he has acquired, as seen on your screens. So Lot is departing from his uncle Abraham. So after the separation, God appeared to Abraham and assured him that the rest of the land shall be for him. So Abraham had a very good relationship with God. God appeared to him most of the time. And let's look at the birth of Isaac. Remember that God had promised Abraham earlier that he will make him the father of many nations, as his name depicts. So the birth of Isaac. As a result of Sarah's barrenness, she asked Abraham to give Hagar. Hagar was one of the servants that was given by Pharaoh to Abraham, so that he would have a child with her. So Sarah recommended Hagar for, for Abraham. And Abraham had a son with Hagar. And his name was Ishmael. Yes, his name was Ishmael. But after some time, Hagar started misbehaving and showing disrespect to Sarah because she had a child, but Sarah didn't have a child. So Sarah told Abraham to let Hagar go away from their home. So as seen on your screens, Hagar and his son Ishmael were driven out of Sarah's home. 
Then God appeared to Abraham again. This time he appeared in the form of three men. And Abraham showed kindness to these three men by washing their feet and providing them with food and milk. And they promised Abraham that Sarah would conceive and give birth to a son. So this is the picture of God appearing to Abraham in the form of the three men. And they sh Abraham showed kindness to them by washing their feet and providing them with food and milk. So when Sarah was 90 years and Abraham was 100 years, they had a son. And we can see the joy on Abraham's face from this picture on your screen. Abraham finally has a son, a son that was promised by God through the three men that appeared to him. Now let's look at how God tested Abraham. God tested Abraham's faith by asking him to offer his son Isaac as a burnt offering to him. What would you have done if you were in Abraham's position? Would you have done that? Would you have sacrificed your only son? Or you would have pleaded with God to change his mind. But Abraham obeyed and went searching for where God had told him to make the sacrifice. So after three days, he found the place and decided to take his son along. So they carried sticks because they were going to burn Isaac as offering. So you needed sticks to set the fire. And they got there. Abraham raised the altar, placed the sticks on them, and was ready to offer Isaac a sacrifice. Then he heard the voice of God. God, through an angel, appeared to him and told him not to sacrifice his son. And just when Abraham turned, he saw a lamb that God had provided for the sacrifice. Remember that God was just testing Abraham's faith. So Abraham named the place Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. Because God provided the lamb for the sacrifice. So Abraham was called the father of faith after this incident where he agreed to offer his son Isaac as a burnt offering to God. I will conclude with the death of Abraham. The death of Abraham. We learned that Abraham worked faithfully with God and died at the age of 175. Wow, this is amazing. 175. People those days were living long as compared to these days. So Abraham lived 175 years before he died. Good. Now let's look at the moral lessons from the life of Abraham. So everything that we have discussed, what moral lessons are we learning from the life of Abraham? And one, Abraham was obedient to God and worked faithfully with him. Abraham obeyed everything that God said, including sacrificing his son, Isaac. Then Abraham trusted God and depended on him for all his needs. 
Remember that during the time he was supposed to sacrifice his son, God provided a lamb. And so we can also learn from Abraham by depending solely on God to provide all our needs. And three, God blessed Abraham with wealth, yet he did not allow it to override his humility. Abraham was very rich. He had everything at his disposal. Servants, animals, everything. Yet he was humble to God. And for Abraham was peaceful. So he resolved the conflict between him and Lot. Remember that the herdsmen had some confrontations. But Abraham resolved it amicably. Because he was a peaceful person. And we can also learn to remain at peace with everybody. Our siblings at home, at school, we must learn to live at peace with our friends. We shouldn't instigate people to fight. It's a bad attitude. We should learn to be peaceful like Abraham. Then five, Abraham had faith. And was ready to sacrifice his son to God. He had lots of faith. And so he was willing to sacrifice his son to God. Now, a lesson for assessments. Who is a religious leader? Who is a religious leader? Remember, it is part of our objectives. Who is a religious leader? And a religious leader is someone who is recognized by a religious body as having some qualities or authority. So that is a religious leader. Then to mention the classification of religious leaders. Mention the classification of religious leaders. So we have patriarchs, we have prophets, caliphs, and traditional religious leaders. So these are the four classification of leaders that we have based on the religions that we have in Ghana. Now it's time for our assessment, our assignment, sorry, it's time for our assignments. And let's write these questions down quickly. One, briefly describe the call of Abraham. Describe the call of Abraham. And two, mention any five of the ten plagues. Three, state Three moral lessons from the life of Abraham. State three moral lessons from the life of Abraham. I'm repeating the questions. One, briefly describe the call of Abraham. Two, mention any five of the ten plagues, any five of them. Then three, state three moral lessons from the life of Abraham. If you have written down these questions or taken shots of them, take time to answer them and submit them to at Joy Learning TV on YouTube. At Joy Learning TV on YouTube and Facebook. Let's quickly go through our lesson for today to remind ourselves of what we did. So we discussed the call of Abraham and the covenant that God made with Abraham. And we also discussed the importance of Abraham's covenant. And four lessons that were learned from the covenant that God had with Abraham. We also looked at Abraham in Egypt as a result of the famine in Canaan. Then the strife between the herdsmen of Abraham and Lot. 
And then we looked at the birth of Isaac and how God tested Abraham's faith by asking him to sacrifice his son. We are done with our lesson. I hope that you enjoy them. I entreat you to answer the questions for our assignments and submit them to at Joy Learning TV on YouTube and Facebook. Joy Learning TV on Facebook and YouTube. So we meet again for a different topic. It is a bye-bye for me. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.